We've seen a large uptick in interest from our customers inquiring about solar charging their e-bikes these days. And that's not surprising because the price of solar panels has reached an all-time low and the technology of these panels has reached a point where they're actually viable as a way of charging an e-bike battery pack. So in this video, we're going to review the various components for solar e-bike setup and installation and do a basic conversion of my own cargo bike to have solar charging on it. Uh, so first and foremost, any solar e-bike drive is going to need solar panels. Now in the past, most solar panels were pretty heavy structures with an aluminum frame, a glass casing, and mounting these on a bike adds a ton of extra weight that you don't want to be carrying with you. Uh, luckily, what we've seen is the advent of flexible solar panels mounted on a thin plastic substrate. Now these shave off the bulk of the dead weight that you carry with the glass panel and they're available with super high efficiency cells as well. So the panels here are running 20 to 22 percent efficiency. Um, panels of yesteryear might have been 10 to 13 percent. So you see here is a 100 watt panel on top and a 170 watt panel below. This is the type of size of panel that's necessary to get a meaningful charge in uh, solar charging of an e-bike. And if you're touring with a bike where you want to charge all the time, you're actually going to need several panels of this size in order to get an adequate input. So in order to take the solar energy coming from that panel and put it into your battery pack, you need what's called an MPPT charge controller. Now, this is very much like a battery charger, but a battery charger takes AC voltage from the wall and converts that to a DC voltage for the battery pack. What this device does is takes the lower voltage of a panel and steps it up to the higher voltage of your battery. That step up process is called a boost conversion, and these are special MPPT boost controllers. You'll see solar charge controllers available from lots of places online, but they're generally for charging 12 volt systems where you're stepping down the voltage. So boost converters like this are a lot rarer to come by, but there's now enough options available to give you as an e-bike enthusiast uh, plenty of choices. Uh, the most premium version is the Jenison charge controller. So this is an American company, runs at supremely good efficiency, incredibly fast response time. But the downside is that they have a fixed output voltage. So you have to choose the voltage of your charge controller to match your battery voltage. There's a number of various overseas import charge controllers that you can find on eBay and other online sources of quite varying quality and capabilities. We've explored a number of options and found this version here is our current preferred go-to model. Now, one of the benefits of these import controllers, not only are they less expensive, of course, but they also let you program the output voltage. So you can have one charge controller that you can use both for 36 volt batteries or 48 or 72 volts. And they also give a simple readout of what's going on with the solar system as opposed to a simple LED that is all you get on the Jenison device. Um, so once you have the output of your MPPT charge controller available, uh, what's required to actually charge your battery is an adapter cable to go either to the charging port of your battery or if you're splicing up multiple batteries in parallel, you might charge all the batteries from the discharge ports. Uh, so in my hands here, I have a simple little adapter I made that goes to the SD3 charge port that matches the charging port input of the battery pack. So in a bare bones system, you get yourself a solar panel, an MPPT boost converter, adapt the wiring to go into the charging port of your battery, and there you can charge your e-bike battery from sunlight. So if you're a Grin customer, you're probably already familiar with our cycle analyst display. And what we've done to accommodate interest in solar e-bike systems is created a custom solar firmware for the version 3 cycle analyst and created a separate piece of hardware, a solar current sensor, that lets the cycle analyst display also see how many amps are flowing into the battery from the solar panels, and it does that independently of measuring how many amps is flowing from the motor controller to the motor. So if you want to take advantage of that and see what's going on with your e-bike, while you're riding it, you can add a solar current sensor between the output of the MPPT and the charging input of the battery pack. And this then plugs into the spare auxiliary input port of the cycle analyst. Now you can have a single dashboard where you see all in one place your speed, your power going out, but also the solar watts coming in. You can see in real time as the sun conditions change, if you have a tiltable panel, you can change the angle and then optimize your ride to get the most solar input during the course of that trip. So now we're going to put these pieces of hardware on my cargo bike and just show you how simple it is to hook this up and add solar charging to an existing e-bike system. So here's my cargo e-bike. We've made a quick and dirty little wooden support structure to support the panel on the back end of the cargo rack area. 
Um, these panels are flexible, but it's really important that you mount them in a way where they're not prone to flexing a bunch from vibration. Uh, excessive vibration, if these are flexing up and down while you're riding, can cause little micro cracks on the solar cells themselves and cause a quick degradation of the efficiency and power output of the panels themselves. So make sure that you support the panel in a reg relatively rigid platform. Um, now, in this case, you'll notice that the panel is uh, not too far behind where I'm sitting. What that means is that if I'm ever having riding with the sun in front of me, my body's going to be casting a shadow on the back of this. So if we were plan to optimize this a little bit better for um, traveling and getting solar charge, you'd probably want to shift this whole thing almost as far back as stability allows. Um, here, I just want to demonstrate how this process works. Um, another detail that I want to mention about the installation is that, uh, again, these panels are flexible, but they're best performance is always attained when they're laid flat. A lot of people I've seen are tempted to make like a curved roof structure, um, but curvature always reduces the output that you'll get because it's the panel with the least amount of sun that limits how much comes out of it. So keep the panels flat and keep them mounted in a way that they can't wobble up and down while you're uh, riding in bumpy terrain. Uh, so with the panel simply uh, supported on the back here, uh, I'm going to need to take the output of this panel and then hook it up to our charge controller. I think a nice place to mount the charge controller will be just on the back of the bike, so I'll just put that on with a couple zip ties. And, uh, so in this case, the charge port's on the right side of the bike here. Um, this is going to stick out a little bit. I don't want this to interfere with my pedaling, so I'm going to roll that up and backwards, and then we'll be able to tuck this inside the spiral wrap. Then the solar shunt is going to go in line here. The shunt itself has an indicator um, for the battery side and the solar side, so orient the battery side towards the battery. And then this is going to go to the input, uh, sorry, the output of the MPPT charge controller, um, and that's labeled clearly output on there. And now I can line all this up. That works perfect there, so I'm going to put this inside the spiral wrapping. So I've got all the wiring tightly wrapped up now, and only remaining step is going to be to reflash the cycle analyst to have our special solar firmware. So I'm going to show you how that's done on our setup utility software and do a little walkthrough about what the new solar screens represent. So in order to get the special solar firmware on this cycle analyst, we first have to download it from the uh, Grin server. So in the Setup Utility software, there's a button, Get New Firmware. If you click this button and haven't done it before, you'll be presented with options for release firmware, beta firmware, alpha firmware, and a checkbox at the very bottom to download the latest solar firmwares. So by checking this checkbox and clicking OK, the software is now going to get and install the solar version of the firmware. OK, with the firmware available on our setup utility, we now click Update Firmware. Um, we make sure that the uh, TRRS communication cable is plugged in to the COM port on the cycle analyst. Um, and now, where we select firmware, we're going to see below all of the standard production firmware releases, you'll see a section called Solar. Expand that Solar tab, and now you'll see the options for the cycle analyst. Uh, solar firmware, so it's a 3.13 version 1 we're going to install here. Uh, there may be newer solar releases, uh, so pick the most recent one if you see additional options available. Um, and now, obviously, we need to choose the right COM port for this uh, cable. Um, and in general, you don't want to reset settings to default. Uh, we want to preserve all the settings that we had so that we don't lose any of the configuration of our um, existing system. Um, so you'll notice that after clicking to update the firmware, we get a little warning that there's different parameters on the solar firmware than what's installed, um, and that some of these new parameters, like the solar amp scale, um, solar amp zero offset, these parameters are going to be set to their default values because it can't import them from the previous system because they weren't there. So now you can see it's the S, the big S at the end stands for solar. OK, uh, so at first glance, this looks very similar. The only thing you'll notice on the main display that's different is in the top right corner while it toggles, we now see solar amps and solar amp hours as one of the values over there. You'll also notice that the voltage display is now alternating between showing battery voltage and showing battery amp hours. So one of the things with the solar uh, firmware is that we have so many more parameters to show that we've increased the amount of customizations that can be done on this main display. Um, so the first thing we're going to do now is step through the calibration. So you see right now it says we have 25 solar amps flowing through here. Um, the reason for that is that I haven't yet plugged in my solar current sensor to the auxiliary input plug. Uh, as soon as I plug this in, 
Um, now we've actually hooked it up. We see it says 0.3 solar amps rather than uh, 25 solar amps, um, but it's still not the properly calibrated value. Uh, so in order to uh, tune this up, um, as we scroll through the setup menu, you will see that there's a new setup menu where we used to have the auxiliary analog that's been replaced with the setup solar. So what you see at a glance here, this is the voltage coming out of the solar current sensor, and this is how many amps it's corresponding to. Every sensor has a slightly different value for the offset point. Nominally, it's 2.5 volts, but they vary a bit from one to the other. And every current sensor also has a special calibration for how those, the voltage on the sensor is converted over into an amperage reading. So you can see that this has laser etched on the surface, a calibration parameter of 7.35 amps per volt. It's very important in the software, in the firmware, that you match that value for the scale reading over here. So I'm going to change this from 10 amps per volt um, down to 7.5. So if you don't do this step and you skip it, that of course would mean all of the readings on the cycle analyst are going to be off by whatever amount your calibration was off from the default of, of 10.0. So we set this to 7.35. Okay. Great, and now the next thing we want to do is run the zero amps routine. So this is going to say that this is capturing the value that corresponds to no solar input. Now you don't want to do this when everything's hooked up and there's solar current flowing in because then you'll be offsetting an existing amperage that is flowing into the setup. Um, right now there's so little light in here that our charge controller hasn't even turned on, so we know we actually have zero amps flowing. But if we wanted to be totally, totally sure, um, we could also simply disconnect the uh, MPPT from the solar shunt, so now we know there's no current flowing in here. And at the zero amp screen, you want to press and hold the button. What it's showing right now, and you can see this clearly, if I unplug the sensor, that pops up to 5 volts. I plug it in, it's a 2.47. So this is a live readout of the current sense voltage, and this is the value that's saved as the zero reference. So we want 2.47 to be the new zero reference. I'll press and hold the button and now 2.47 is the zero reference. Now when I exit, you see it's showing exactly zero amps, which is correct. Okay, so that's the essential bit that you have to do. That's setting up the cycle analyst to be calibrated to that particular current sensor. There is some more advanced things that are possible inside here, and that's regarding the display customization. Some of this stuff is exactly as it is on this regular cycle analyst, but the custom views has been expanded in a significant manner. What you see on the right here, that is an L for left. So this is letting us customize what parameters we see on the left side of the display. So now we're showing the battery voltage. We're not showing the individual cell voltage, but we are showing the battery amp hours on the left side of the display. We could also show battery watt hours. We're also showing uh, yeah, battery water. As, as we get to the next setting, number five, now you see this is customizing what we see on the right side of the screen, and that's where we normally only have our custom views. So here we see the total distance. We don't see the battery discharge amp hours, but we do see the, scrolling through here, oh, that's an over temperature alert, um, we will see the solar amperage right here, as well as the total solar amp hours. So the default configuration shows you your solar amps and amp hours on the right and your battery amp hours on the left. Okay, um, and as we go back to the main display here, i just give this a second, the secondary screen here lets you see at a glance the electrical parameters. Everything at the bottom is what's happening with the solar system and everything at the top is what's happening on the motor controller side. Uh, we're going to take this bike outside in a bit to actually see solar amps and solar watts, but if you want to just see all the time what's happening with solar and what's happening with the bike and you don't care about your bicycle speed and distance, the second screen is an ideal one for that. Um, but otherwise the main display here toggles between all the things you might want to see while you're actually riding. So let's take this into some sun. It's right out there. Now, if we had the Jenison MPPT, we'd all be good to go here, uh, but this is one of the programmable charge controllers. So the next step, of course, is to make sure that we program the output voltage to match the battery pack. So in this particular model, it's quite straightforward. There's a plus and a down button, and uh, we just want to push the plus button, and then we can see in 0.1 volt increments where our output's set to. Now, I've got a 52 volt nominal battery, so fully charged, that would be 58.8 volts. So if I wanted my solar system to bring the batteries 100% charged, I would set this all the way up to 58.8, uh, then just click OK, 
um, and now this will enable charging of the battery to 100%. Now, personally, I don't like going all the way up to 100% charging because my own bike, I'm heavily dependent on regenerative braking, and it also improves the cycle life of the cells if you're not routinely leaving them fully charged. So I'm actually going to step this output down and save it to maybe 57 volts. Uh, what that's going to do is allow the battery to charge up most of the way, 85% or so, and that leaves enough of a reserve that even after being out in the sun all day, I'll still have full regenerative braking available right from the start of my trip. Um, so now I'm in the shade, you're not seeing very many watts. As soon as I roll this to be fully on in the sunshine. So the second display screen, as I mentioned, that you just see constantly the solar amps and the solar watts. And right now with the bike upright, the sun sitting at, I don't know, time is it now? <laughs> it's pretty much 12 o'clock, but the sun's never straight above us uh, at, uh, up here at our latitude. Anyways, we're seeing about 75 watts of power out of a 100 watt nominal panel. Now, if all I simply do is tilt this to face the sun a little bit more, you'll see that's increasing 82, 84, 85 watts. Uh, right after I pulled this out of the building and we did that exact same thing, uh, we got 90 watts when we faced the sun and close to 78 watts here. And what's happened in the 10 minutes that we were just setting up the cameras, uh, the solar panel has heated up from the sunshine and that extra heat reduces the voltage of the panel and hence reduces the power output that they're able to put. Um, but this shows you that you really do get close to the ratings of the panel when you're in good sun conditions. So, um, so this does highlight one aspect of solar bike systems and that's whether or not you want to tilt the panels to face the sun. So here I've mounted this flat on the rack with no tilting capabilities and as a result if I'm just biking at this time of day I'm going to be getting about 15% less charge into the battery than if I was able to tilt it to face the sun. Um, the problem with tilting of course is that that optimal tilt angle changes every time you change directions and it changes throughout the day as the sun moves across the sky. Uh, so some of the more entrepreneurial solar e-bike riders have actually been building automated motorized tilting devices that either sense where the sun is with optical sensors or that programmatically determine it based on the GPS coordinates and the direction that you're traveling. But one thing that we have found in looking at the contestants of the SunTrip solar bike races is that there isn't a huge difference in the daily capture on average between those who've had fixed flat solar systems just pointing straight up um, and those who've gone through the effort of tilting them. Um, but one thing I will say is that when you're dealing with capturing solar energy in the mornings or in the evenings and the sun is really down on the horizon, the difference is much more than that 15% we saw here going from 75 to 85 watts. Um, you'll actually see a difference of a factor of two to three um, when the sun's further down. So if you don't have a tilting panel and you're looking to harvest the most solar input, uh, and you're say bike camping or bike touring, there you really do want to prop your bike up so that the panel faces the sun for whatever time of day it happens to be. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is go for a little spin around riding this bike and actually accumulate some riding statistics while we're capturing solar energy, we're burning energy from the battery, and when I get back, we're gonna just talk a little bit about what those statistics screens mean. So now that we've done a little run around the block, we've got some useful statistics on the cycle analyst capturing solar energy while we were riding. And I'm just going to review what some of the display screens show. This is a little bit technical, but for those who have an analytic mind, it shows some quite interesting insight to how the solar system's performing. So if you look at the display screen right now, the first screen, of course, and the second screen show what's going on instantaneously. What we want to look at is the net effect for this trip. So this here is alternating now between soling the average watt hours per kilometer um, that we're using just from the perspective of the battery. And then it alternates to show how many solars watt hour we got and our net watt hours per kilometer factoring in the solar input. So in this particular display, you can see that my net watt hours per kilometer is negative, negative four watt hours per kilometer. So the way that I was riding, and this includes the time that I was parked with the solar panel in the sunshine, I was actually putting more watt hours into the battery than I was consuming. Um, so if I kept throughout the day this way, the battery would get more and more and more charged. So if that net watt hours per kilometer is zero, that's the point where you've taken in from the sun exactly the same as you've put out to the motor. So this gives you a really nice real-time readout over the course of the trip up to that point, whether on the whole you've harvested more energy or you've expended more energy. Um, and uh, at this rate, uh, for every kilometer that I traveled, I actually harvested four watt hours out of the sun. Uh, that was largely because it stayed parked before the trip. If I had reset it just before I left, then that would be a positive, not a negative number. So now if we look over to the, uh, an additional screen of interest, uh, the region screen, uh, so normally here, this just shows you, you 
the percent regen from regenerative braking alternating with the regen in the forward amp hours. Um, I do a lot of regen with this bike setup, so from regen I got 22%, but this now alternates to show solar statistics. And here you can see that I got 146%, I got more solar input than I consumed. And this lets us also see from a solar perspective uh, how much the solar has increased the range. And we can see we've accumulated, you know, 0.9 solar amp hours, which is more than we consumed. So 0.9 came from solar, 0.13 from regen, and we only used 0.75 amp hours in that short little trip. So those two additional screens, they provide a more richer insight into the real contribution that solar energy, regenerative braking energy, have played in extending the range that you're getting out of the battery pack. Mm. So that illustrated the relatively straightforward installation of a solar charge system onto an e-bike with one solar panel. Um, in our next video, we're going to talk in more detail about having multiple solar panels all hooked up together. So this is sufficient for a lot of people's needs, but if you're touring or traveling great distances, relying only on the sun to charge your e-bike bank, you're probably going to want three, four, maybe even five solar panels in total. And there's more complexity when you're wiring up a multi-panel system. So we'll look forward to our next video. And in the meantime, happy riding. Thank you.